Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled People, where in today's episode, you'll hear about the most entitled people ever. And yes, these people think they deserve more than others because they're better. They're better than everybody else. Guys, I hope you enjoy these super entitled stories today, and do remember to hit that subscribe button for future tales. Guys, we're diving in. So, I used to play in an orchestra for many years. We had a new trumpet player joining us, and he was well into his late 30s and had just moved to the area. Now, at the time, I was 18 years old and was preparing to move to another city to start university. My friends and I had a group chat, and I'm assuming that this is how he got his hands on my phone number. He would then start to text me, complaining about how he doesn't know anybody and how he was so lonely. He would also start complimenting me often and asking me out. Now I did decline, I told him I wasn't interested and I kept my polite distance, but I probably should have been more insisting. Now I say this because it got so bad that one night, when I was taking the train back from a trip to my new hometown, 500 kilometers away, he would terrorize me via phone by calling me non-stop at 4am. He also threatened to kill himself if I didn't go out with him. The guy would tell me he was walking towards the train tracks and that he was drinking and that he would just end it all now if I didn't say yes to a date. Yep, he thought he was entitled to date me. Now, I didn't fully believe him, but I couldn't be sure, so I called the police and made them check on him. The officers were very understanding, and I gave them a detailed description of him, his name, his current address, and surprise, surprise, they found the guy sitting at home completely sober. They warned him that they would take him away for a nice and cozy 24 hour stay if he dared to pull that stunt again. So after they left, he freaked out on me, calling me all kinds of names, telling me it had all been a joke and how I'm too stupid to see that, yada yada yada. The guy then threatens violence and I contemplate in calling the authorities again to take up their offer on filing a report against him, which I declined earlier. So the next day, he starts texting our group chat, telling everybody that we had a relationship, a sexual one, and that I broke his heart by being a whore. The guy also wanted the others to choose between myself or him, as he was too hurt to be in my presence. The thing is, nobody believed him. The conductor called to check up on me, to ask whether I wanted the organizers to take action, or whether I needed help with anything. They had already decided on kicking him out for harassment. So not only did the dude lose his only social connections, the orchestra, and made a fool of himself in a very small town, he now has an internal memo with the police department for what he pulled, all because he felt entitled to a relationship with me. Yeah, so that guy doesn't sound crazy at all guys. Like, if he was willing to say things like that, to try to be manipulative, to get OP to go on a date with him, imagine what would happen if they were in a relationship, and then OP realized, oh, yeah, I don't want to be with this guy anymore. The guy would go friggin' psycho. It's probably the reason he's still single in his late 30s, guys. Or he could be going crazy and getting all desperate because he's single in his 30s, guys. Like, who knows? Now, before we begin, I need to say that I'm a photographer. I'm also South Asian, brown, and moved into this uppity HOA neighborhood with my husband that has an exclusive private park just for the residents. You need a gate code to access the park. It's that fancy. So, within the park lies a children's playground. It's a separate playground with swings, benches, and a path around a beautiful little pond. Surrounding the park lies houses, facing their backyard. So on this day, I went on my morning walk quite early to combat my anxiety. It was just me at the park at the time. Now as I'm walking along the park, I happen to spot a squirrel in the park running around. I pull out my camera and capture the moment where the squirrel runs up the slide. I get a few shots of that, and then move on to the fountain nestled within the pond, during what I consider the right kind of light. I want to show my family and friends where we moved. I then sit on a swing and look through my photos. So, as I'm sitting there, a Karen approaches me from behind, being belligerent. She scares the living crap out of me. Now, the woman is likely in her late 50s. She has binoculars around her neck. She then says to me, so, what's your business here taking photos of the playground and the pond? You look very suspicious. Now, being surprised and being approached so closely, I react defensively and ask her to back off, as I was minding my own business. I told her I was just here for a morning walk and to take some pictures, as I'm a photographer. I was about to bring up my camera to show her some pictures of the squirrel I took when she interrupts me. Now, the woman clearly doesn't like that I'm trying to explain myself and repeats herself and accuses me of looking like a pedo who's acting suspiciously. 
I then question her authority to interrogate me on a property that's not hers. I tell her, ma'am, this is a public park, I can be here if I want to be. Now, this woman wasn't having it though, and she decides to talk over me. She says, no, this isn't public property. Not for you it isn't. This is my property. I pay the HOA dues, and I have the right to know who you are and why you're taking photos. I am an ex-police officer, you know, so you need to listen to me and tell me what it is you're doing here taking photos. Now, at this point, I am flabbergasted, and I'm nervous, as she said she's an ex-cop. I don't hold back though, and I tell her I'm just taking photos of the park for my personal social media. I tell her I have every right to do so, and we pay HOA dues here as well. The woman then proceeds to harass me. She asked me where I live, who I am, what I'm doing here, again, and I refuse to answer her questions because I don't feel comfortable divulging personal information to someone that I don't know. The Karen then says to me, There are kids who play at this park. What you're doing is very suspicious and I need to know who you are. I'm an officer of the law. Now at this point, I look around the park. I tell her to look around the park. I then respond telling her, Ma'am, look around. There's not a single soul in the park besides you and I right now. There is absolutely nobody around us, let alone kids. None. At this, she gets extremely angry. She's yelling and threatens to call the cops so they can fish that info out of me. I encourage her to do so, and tell her that I'll be making my own phone call to the police, and she's fuming. I then call my husband and my neighbor, who are both white. Karen's on the phone calling the cops. She then comes charging at me to get answers, and I tell her to back off while taking fast-paced steps backwards. I tell her, please, don't approach me. I'm not comfortable with you approaching me, and I'm afraid. Now, I'm not gonna lie. She was raging at this point, and it looked like she was coming to hit me. And if I hit her back, the law would not be on my side. Now, at this point, my husband shows up, but obviously Karen doesn't know it's my husband. All she sees is a large white man approaching, and she retreats. My husband walks up to me and asks me to explain the situation, so I do. He then approaches her to calmly talk about it, and she turns into this soft puppy who's claiming that I escalated the situation by not answering her questions and being aggressive with her. Now, this woman lies through her teeth about there being kids at the park, and she was very concerned, and that's why she was there. She said that's why she came to confront me. Then she questions him why he's so invested in defending me. My husband then says that we're married, and she couldn't fathom that idea that a white man and a brown man could be a couple. My neighbor then shows up shortly after, and then he talks with her, and they know each other. They then resolve the matter. The cops then arrive, and Karen tells them that there was a misunderstanding. The cops leave us alone. She then tries to make amends and introduce herself to me and shake hands, and I refuse. I tell her she could have been nicer about the whole situation, and I take my leave. Guys, what a wild story. OP was doing nothing wrong, and he had the gate code to the park. And I don't believe for a second that she was an ex-cop, though, because she handled that situation so poorly. Like, what a way to be welcome to the neighborhood, hey? So this one person also shares their experience with an HOA. So the same exact thing happened to me and my kids at a public park in a predominantly white area. I took my kids to go feed the ducks. As I was walking, I saw a woman stare at us as we passed by, but I thought nothing of it. So the next thing I know, a police officer rolls up and says that there was a complaint about Mexicans throwing rocks at the ducks, and that I was letting my kids play in the pond. Now I was so pissed, we were feeding the ducks from the biggest yellow box of Cheerios a person can buy, and no ducks were harmed, and no kids were wet. Like, screw that person. Recently, my sister and her husband came to really like Baby Yoda, the child in The Mandalorian. I crochet, so I made them a Baby Yoda, something my 4 year old niece liked as well. I ended up making another Baby Yoda in purple, my niece's favorite color specifically for her. Yesterday, I was babysitting my niece, and we went to Walmart to pick up some snacks and ingredients for dinner. My niece insisted that we bring her baby Yoda with us. Now, this happened fast, while I was picking through bags of spinach. My niece, who was in the shopping cart, began screaming and crying. Despite not having any kids yet, I'm more than a little of a mama bear, and instantly abandoned the spinach to check on her. I see that my niece was halfway out of her cart, still screaming pointing at a woman who was walking away with a very familiar purple baby Yoda in her cart, heading towards the registers. I picked up my niece and stormed after this woman, leaving my shopping carts as she turned into a register. She had put her things down on the checkout conveyor belt when I got there, and most of her things were already scanned and she was trying to discuss prices for the baby Yoda. I can hear her say, 
Oh, it's not in the best of shape, and the price indicated that it was $12.99. Could you give me a discount? Now at this point, I march over, with my sobbing niece in my arm, and I snatch the baby Yoda from the surprise clerk, who was checking for a tag. The woman screeched as she grabbed at the toy as well, and she says, How dare you! I'm buying this for my daughter! She loves purple, and those other ones are all green! I tell her that this belongs to my niece, I made it for her. She says, Liar, you're just angry I got it first. Now, a manager must have been attracted by the noise of screams because he approached, with a less than pleased look on his face, and he says, Is there something wrong here? The entitled woman points at me with her free hand and says, This woman is trying to take this doll that I'm buying for my daughter. Now, I was still trying to keep a grip on baby Yoda, and I said, I told you, I made this. The Yodas sold here aren't even made from yarn. Now at this point, the manager calls security, after a moment of trying to mediate, and I was forced to let go of the Yoda to talk to the guard. Now, luckily, I like to take pictures of my projects that I finish, so it only took a moment for me to pull out my phone and bring up a picture of the baby Yoda when I finished it. We both looked back to the cash register, and my niece began to cry again, when we saw the woman was gone, and the manager approached us with a hard look. The manager says to me, Look, I realize those toys are very popular, but you shouldn't try to steal one of a specific color from someone. I then held up my phone. The picture was still up, and I saw the man's face drain of color when he saw the toy in an environment that was very much not his store. But the damage was already done. He had sold my niece's toy to that entitled woman, and she had left. Needless to say, I'm never going back to that Walmart again, and my niece is still very upset about her purple baby Yoda being stolen. I'm making another one for her currently, one that'll have her name stitched onto the back so this will never happen again. It did take a while, and I was intently focused on finishing the new baby Yoda for my niece, but I do have an update. Mostly, it's disappointing, but there is some good news. So I called the police, and they were only interested in the fact that the materials cost less than $15 total, and didn't intend to follow up. I'm not sure what's happened to the store manager, but I did find the cashier when I went back the past weekend. She had apparently objected to the sale and refused to do it, and it seems like the manager is no longer employed, but I don't know for sure. But the best part of the week is I received an anonymous message telling me to go to the shop across the street from the store, where the baby Yoda was taken. I went there and there was a sack there, and purple baby Yoda was inside. One of the arms had been gnawed off and the robe was ruined, but I was able to remake and replace the pieces. I'm not really sure what happened, but I'd like to think that the entitled mother became the target of a lot of pressure from family and friends. I'll be finishing a new robe for the new Yoda, and then my niece will be getting her two toys when I see her next. Okay, so OP does post a picture of the Yoda she made, and it clearly looks like something homemade. Like, I don't even know why they let her pay for that and walk out with it. The manager really dropped the ball on that one. So this person in the post comments, I worked at Walmart for a while as a customer service manager, and what that man did I'm pretty sure should be cause for termination. If there's no tag on it, you need to find one that has a tag, or find the product on the shelf and get the correct price. This dude obviously did not do that because he would have seen that it wasn't being sold in the store. He basically stole from you and sold the stolen goods. Like yeah guys, any person with common sense would have checked their inventory. Especially when there's a person screaming not to let this woman buy it because she made it. When I was 12 years old, my parents moved us to a new place, and our neighbors were unpleasant. There was an entitled mother and father. Now I've never met the guy so I can't call him entitled. They had two sons, one was 13 and the other one was about 8 or 9 years old. The older brother was a decent guy and we were school bus pals. But the younger one was an issue. But looking back on it, he probably had a social disorder like Asperger's or perhaps ADHD. Now, my mom did not like this kid. A few incidents happened before with him, and my mom nicknamed him the Orange-Haired Goblin. Now, this story is told from my mother's perspective, as she dealt with the entitled mother. Despite this happening over 10 years ago, I do remember that it happened. But the written dialogue here is pulled from my mother's retelling of the story, so there is a tad bit of embellishment. Now, this was in the day of dial-up in my country. It was fantastic. My mom and I had a system where I'd quickly load a flash game with a heads up, and then disconnect from the internet and plug the phone back in. It was in the school holidays, so it was just me and my mom at home and my dad was at work, so it was an otherwise empty house when this happened. Mom says, OP, you're supposed to give a heads up when you're unplugging the phone. I need to make a call. Now, I'm in the backyard, and I told her I'm not using the computer though. My mom looks confused, and then she turns around. 
She and I have the same idea, so we both head to the room with a computer. And there we find the orange-haired goblin. Mom says, Excuse me, what are you doing? The kid says, My mom told me I could use your computer. Now, my mom, despite hating the kid, is not unreasonable. She's not going to get annoyed with an 8 or 9 year old, and she says, But why don't you use yours? The kid then says, I broke it. My mom tells him, well, sorry, but she can't decide that. You have to ask for permission. Besides, you can't let yourself in our house anytime you want. You can finish the game, but I need to plug the phone back in so you can't load anything else. So my mom then gave me a look that meant keep an eye on him. The kid then leaves, and then 10 minutes later, we hear a knock on the door. I go to answer, but my mom gets there first. And there we see the entitled mother. She says, so my son told me you won't let him on your computer. My mom then says, Oh right, the kid who let himself into my home. He told me that you told him that he could use my computer, why is that? The mom then says, His was broken, and I needed something to keep him busy. My mom then asked, So that makes it okay? I wouldn't have minded letting him use it if you had just discussed it with me first. The mom then says, Listen, my son is very careful, so there's no harm in him using it. Clearly there is if he broke his. At this point, the mom must have been getting annoyed. I heard this part for myself as she started shouting very loudly. She says, He only broke his keyboard. He spilled his drink on it. It's safe for him to use yours because he learned his lesson. My mom then tells her, It still doesn't give him or you the right to come and go as you please and use our property without permission. But you said you'd let him, so what's the problem? My problem is a strange kid I barely know just walked into my house and used my computer because his mother said he could. If that's how you treat your neighbors, then you or your children aren't welcome here anymore. Now at this point my mom slams the door, and that's the last we heard from the entitled mother. And she'd stare at us every time she saw us leaving the house. My mom would make jokes about the kid if she saw him on the street, like, Crap, it's the orange-haired goblin. Remember to lock the door. So when school resumed, I was talking to the older brother on the school bus. He told me that his mother had asked him to steal our keyboard if he ever comes around again. He understood his mother was a wackadoodle, so we just had a laugh about it. Now, I know a lot of people are wondering how the kid got inside without us knowing. So where I live, the doors are usually kept unlocked, but we learned our lesson and started to lock our door after. <laughs> that mom is actually pretty nice. I know a lot of listeners would just call the police to teach this mom a lesson. Like, the kid did break into a home, so how the heck did his mom even think that she was winning this argument? But hey, that's entitled people for ya. And that, my friends, brings us to another NFR slash entitled people. Guys, we survived yet another one. If you enjoyed the stories today, do hit that thumbs up. And if you missed the last episode of r slash entitled people, listen, it's wild because an insane parent basically attacks a five-year-old for taking her last scoop of ice cream. I know it sounds insane. The story's insane. So check it out if you haven't. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Steve-O loves you. Hmm. Do I though?